Yo, Danny Vanna, you won the giveaway from last week. Congratulations, comic fam. Let's chat about the hottest comics in the multiverse. Another week, another list. The comics defining this generation of collectors. We got the kingpin, the gem pin, the leader of the gem pyre, gem from Gem and Collectibles. How you feeling? He is I, and I am him. Slim with the tilted brim. What's going on, comic fam? What's up, comic Tom? We're going to jump into number 10 on the list. We have a book that hasn't made the list in quite some time, but she's back here for a whole new reason. Well, starting back in November 2020, we saw a 9.8, one of three in existence on the census, and that book went for $90,000. Last year, 2021, we actually saw a 9.6 hit $41,000 with Bridget Reagan attached. She's from Paradise Lost. She will be playing Poison Ivy in the upcoming Batwoman season three. Yeah, that's right. We had those banger sales that caused a trickle-down effect. We have the casting rumors here, which is probably propelling this book onto our list. Now, remember, this book does have a centerfold. Don't be like this .5, although selling for two seventy eight in October and up 8% selling for two ninety nine. You just want to make sure that centerfold's attached. That's right. No centerfold in the .5 sale, and that is 8% up. People caring less and less about a completed book, it appears. A 6.0 going for $1,800 this past week matched its prior high sale from September. The book is staying consistent. And then the CGC 6.5, which sold for $1,700 back in April, up 53%, now selling for $2,600. Use that code TOM101 on the best comic app in existence. Key Collector Comics available for both Androids and iPhones. Unlock a free two-week subscription, but you also support what we do. Get access to this list before we even get to it and post it on YouTube. Next at the list, at number nine, Ultimate Comics Spider-Man number one. First solo title, second appearance of Miles Morales, and the first appearance of his uncle, the Prowler, who seems to already be in the MCU. Now, this is a special number on the list because although cover A, which was polybagged at release, is indeed hot, it's the variants, the 1 in 15 and the 1 in 30, both done by Sarah Pacelli, that are actually placing this book at number 9. We have a twofer for them, Jim. So let's start with that one out of 30. The CGC 9.4 sold for 575 back in December. It's up 65%, now selling for 950. Then we have the 9.6 going for 1250 in October. That's up 40%, now selling for $1,750. Now, although it's being listed for more money, we are actually seeing more movement and selling at a higher rate of the one in 15. The 9.6 sold for a grand back in 2020, up 10%, holding still, selling for 1100 The 9.8 sold for $2,274 back in May of last year. That's up 54% this week, now selling for an all-new high for the first time in comic history of $3,500. Now, although the 1 in 30 is indeed rarer, which is probably why it hasn't caught up to the sales that are happening for the 1 in 15, when you look at the census, it gets a little bit more confusing. Jem, what would you expect the census to reflect the differences between a 1 in 15 and a 1 in 30? Yeah, you would think there would be double of the 1 in 15, considering you'd have to buy double just to get one of the others. Taking a look at the census, of the 1 in 15, there are a total of 243 copies on the census graded in all. Of the 1 in 30, 227 total graded. In 9.8, we have 117 copies that exist of the 1 in 15 versus 92 of the 1 in 30. These numbers are near identical. Yeah, looking at the census count, it seems like there should be a lot more 1 out of 15s out there ready to be graded. Moving on to number 8 on the list. I don't know why it's on the list, but I'm glad he's here. Web of Spider-Man issue 118, the first appearance of Ben Riley as the Scarlet Spider. Possibly my favorite version of Spider-Man, especially for character design. We have a direct copy edition and a newsstand record to talk about. I think this is general spider spec. What do you think, Jim? I think it's definitely general spider spec. People saying, hey, maybe this character will show up in the movies. We know we're getting a new trilogy. But also, Ben Riley is Spider-Man in the current run of Amazing Spider-Man and has a new series coming out with a new number one, Ben Riley Spider-Man. So maybe Marvel's trying to foreshadow something. Collectors are picking up on it. We're talking about a new stand edition first, a CGC 8.5, sold for just $81 in November. It's up 17%, now selling for 95 
and a 9.6 newsstand sold for 300 in March, and that's up 8% now selling for 325. The direct market copy had an 8.5 that came to market, last being sold back in March of last year for $70, up 29% this week, now selling for 90, and a 9.0 going for 145 in April. That's up 21% now selling for 175. At the list at number seven, Amazing Spider-Man 134. First appearance of Tarantula, second appearance of Punisher. People are already getting mad at us, Jem. What do you think about this cameo, second appearance versus second appearance? It's a double key. You're good either way, man. Punisher, second appearance, you're golden. And then you have Tarantula, a little bit more of a long shot, but could we see him live action, maybe in an animated film, something? I think there's a lot of potential in this book, and so do other collectors, it seems. A 4.0 sold for $86 in November, slowly creeping up, 3% increase, now selling for 89 but then an 8.0, which sold for 275 in June, also creeping up, up 5%, selling for 290. The 9.2 is up 2%, and the 9.4 back in September sold for $500. That's up 22% this week, now selling for 609. You tell us, comic fam, what do you think? We have the cameo appearance in issue 134, brief but clearly Punisher, and then we have what many consider to be his first full second appearance in issue 135. For many years, members have pointed to 135 as the true second appearance. I want to know your thoughts in the comment section below. And I want you to win a Shattered Comics variant, an homage to Todd McFarlane of Spider-Man number one. Moving on to number six on the list, we have Marvel Spotlight 5, the first appearance of Johnny Blaze, the Ghost Rider, who, by the way, is being solicited in this week's Marvel Comics to have a new series coming out as well. So I'm looking forward to that. Back in May 2021, we saw leaked images that suggest that we may see the spirit of vengeance. Johnny Blaze, maybe a different one, doesn't matter. But in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, it seems less likely by the day, Jem. There's so many characters that they're going to introduce us to that we already know. Hard to believe that they're going to add Johnny Blaze to that list. Yeah, there's so many other things I'd rather see introduced in that movie than Ghost Rider. Like, I want Ghost Rider, but I don't think you need all that. We definitely need some explanation of mutants. We need to know what's going on with uh, evil Doctor Strange. I don't want them to pack too much into it, so I'm with you on that. It appears that Rindra is coming. America Chavez, anybody? Well, let's take a look at the numbers. We have a 2.0 back in November that sold for 875. That's up 3% this week, selling for 905. Also, a 9.2 going for 18 grand in May is looking good because we have a consistent increase that's happening, although small, 3%. New record being set this past week for 18,600. We also have monster sales that tied record breakers in multiple grades, a 4.0 for 1600, a 9.4 for 30 grand and a 9.6 for $84,000. Now moving from number 10 on last week's list to number 5 on this week, Star Wars Darth Vader, issue number 3, the first appearance of Dr. Afra. Creeping its way up onto the list, going from number 10 to number 5. Man, a lot of potential. This is going to be a number 1 book on the list one day when Dr. Afra finally gets confirmed for something. And we know the possibilities with Boba Fett introducing comic book characters from this same era. A 9.6 sold for $309 in July. It's up 7%, now selling for $330. A 9.8 sold for $600 in March. And now that's up 8%, selling for $650. Then we got a 1 in 25 to talk about. Homage to Luke and Darth Vader. We have a 9.0 back in May going for $405, up 23% this week, now selling for $500. And while we're on the subject, let's take cover A, the second print, and put that on the screen. We have a 9.2. That sold for $90 back in January 2021, up 89% this week, now selling for $170. We even got the fourth printing making the list, a CGC 8.0 with no prior record, selling for $180. Moving on to number four, we're at Amazing Spider-Man 3. Otto Octavia is still dominating this hot 10 list. This is something that's fun, Jem, because we were hypothesizing last year how much the spider interest was because of Spider-Man Far From Home. Now that the movie has come and gone, we know Doc Ock's place in the multiverse as it stands right now, this book is still creeping up. What do you think that means? 
I think it means like these can be like comic books where these characters just show up in things here and there. I like that. That's kind of the newer thing in comic book movies now. Back in the day, you killed off the main villain in the first movie, but now these characters are still around. You can bring them back anytime you'd like. Absolutely. And with Ditko, Spidey goodness making the list, we have some crazy record breakers. A 1.5 back in May going for $910 is up 106% now selling for $1,875. The 1.5 is going to break $2,000, Jim. Huge gains on that grade. The CGC 3.5 sold for $3,965 back in March. It's up 6%, holding steady, crossing the $4,000 mark, selling for $4,195. The 4.0 going for $4,560 back in June of last year. That's up 5% this week, selling for $4,800. And the 7.0 price was set back in November last year for $9,300, swinging past the 10K marker, up 68% this week, selling for an all-new high of $15,600. I love seeing these characters, especially villains, continually having gains after the movie's out. And let's talk about a character that hasn't even got in yet. We're talking about number three on this list, Amazing Spider-Man 194. She's got to be coming sometime soon. First appearance of Felicia Hardy, the Black Cat. With rumors of a team-up that would include characters such as Jackpot, Silk, Silver, Sable, Spider-Woman. Heck, there's even Madam Web spec happening. While Black Cat is looking better and better by the day, considering there was an Easter egg in the Morbius trailer and Anya Taylor-Joy rumors that are circling the internet, this book be hot. Hot enough to make the 8.0 go from $480 just last week, up 25%, selling for $600. The 8.5 going from $650 last week, up 13%, now selling for $735. And the 9.2 going for $1,044 back in July, up 5%, now selling for $1,100. That still seems low to me. And when we look at the newsstand sales, it's looking even more impressive. Yeah, that's right. A 6.0 newsstand sold for $750 and a 7.0 sold for $960. Comic fan, we've told you multiple times that lower grade newsstand copies are essentially equivalent to direct market copies. And we're seeing a 7.0 sell for near what you can get a 9.2 of a key book. Yeah, it used to always be like those newsstand editions were really just coveted in 9.8, maybe 9.6 to command a small premium until people started doing some research. And that research is a little difficult to do considering a lot of the sites that track these types of sales don't differentiate between a direct and newsstand copy. Remember that because it's going to become more important as we talk about the next one on the list. Daredevil issue number 168 coming in at number two, the first appearance of Electra if that's how we want to call her. Yeah, Frank Miller pulling a Stan Lee and mispronouncing or misspelling his own character's name with Elytra. Uh, But also it's funny you say depending on what you call her because you could call her Daredevil as she is in the current ongoing series. True, Jem. Very true. Well, the first appearance of Elektra has multiple record breakers and a monster newsstand that we got to discuss. The 6.5 direct market copy went for 224 back in August. That's up 29% selling for 289 this week. The 7.0 going for 325 back in May is up 9% selling for 355. And the 9.2 back in May went for 550. That's up 5% now selling for 575. Then we have the CGC 9.6. It sold for $1,150 back in May, up 30% now, selling for $1,500. But wait, wasn't there a 9.8 sale that just sold during last week's Heritage auction that sold for $13,200, way higher than the previous record of $5,250 from July? This book has seemingly more than doubled in a 9.8. At least that's what it would appear unless you take a look at the comic book. That's why you have to make judgments based off the exact collectible that you're dealing with. That July sale for a little over 5,000 was a direct market copy versus the recent Heritage 9.8. That was a newsstand. And CGC doesn't even notate this on the labels and on their census for many comics, including this one. And that's same to be said with a lot of various sites that track these data points. Not all nine eights are alike. We are basically dealing with two completely different comics when that barcode is present in that grade. And what makes it frustrating is that sometimes these sites will show the newsstand version, sometimes they won't, it depends on the book, and it's not only newsstand, it could be other types of variants as well, like The Walking Dead 1, whether it has the black mature label or the white mature label. 
If you like what we do, hit the subscribe button. If you want to support what we do, hit that like button or go to comictom101.com. Join the February Mystery Mail Call. Thor 21st appearance of the God of Hammers done brilliantly by Alex Maleev is going in one per box. Link in the description below to get yours and at the list of number one. We have Amazing Spider-Man. Nope. Amazing Fantasy 15 on the list. And we're still feeling the trickle-down effect from the highest-selling comic book of all time, the CGC 9.6 that sold for $3.6 million. But, Tom, I don't know if you saw that Secret Wars 8 page that tried to give AF-15 a run for its money. An interior panel debuting the origin of the symbiote, not for the first time in actual print, but in origin tale, sold for, what, over $3 million? Yeah, I think it was like 3300000 or something like that. I did a video on it if you guys want to check it out on the channel. But giving Spider-Man the title in both original art, interior pages, and comic books, a CGC 2.0 sold for $29,500 back in June. It's up 30% now, selling for $38,400. The 2.5 went for $38,400. What? That's what the 2.0 went for. Well, that's up 19% this week, selling for $45,550. The mid-grades are joining in on the action as well. A CGC 5.5 sold for $82,088 just last December. It's up 61% now with this record-breaking sale of $132,000. Then the 7.0 going for $241,500 just this past December. That's up 4% this week. Selling for, wait for it, $252,000. Hot damn, comic fan. Tom, why didn't we buy AF-15s a year ago? Jam, imagine if we own this book in every grade, except for the 9.8 because it doesn't exist. In today's market, that total collection would be worth $8.25 million. Thanks a lot. Don't remind me. Hit the like, slap the subscribe, and as always, geek responsibly and stay minty fresh. Nuff said. Every single Wednesday, Whatnot Wednesday, you can find Gem and myself on the best new app to buy and sell collectibles. Whatnot available for both Androids and iOS. Eight plus hour of auctions that last 60 seconds long that start at a dollar. We have two other videos for you to check out. Stay up on the market and have a great week.